Hi, and welcome to Silverbrook Cemetery. And when I say that, we are on location outside today. It's such a gorgeous day. It's a little warm out here, but <laughs> it's Miss Claudia here with me. And, and when, when we're talking about Silverbrook, I mean, I'm, it's like going to a park. It truly is. I mean, it's, it's just a fantastic place. But we're standing here in front of the office where they can find you. And if they want information, they always stop by here. You guys are pretty much open all the time. Yes, we are open Monday through Friday from 830 to 4 p.m. Um, the actual cemetery. The gates open at 8 o'clock and close at 4.15 every day. But the office is open Monday through Friday. Unless someone makes a special appointment with me, I can come in on a Saturday. Yeah, and of course, uh, right now, today, it, it being as warm as it is, we, I, I'm amazed because I'm standing here and, and we're getting ready to do the show, and a couple of different customers have stopped by. You were taking care of one inside, and then as I was getting ready to come outside, another gentleman was just checking in. People really care about this cemetery. I mean, uh, you know, the, the people that have loved ones here, I mean, they really respect this cemetery. They really do, and we've had families that have had uh, their families buried here from 50, 60 years ago, and they still come out regularly. They still check on their lots if they have a concern or anything. Even if they have a concern about another lot, we have families that will come in and say, hey, look, I see something a little strange going on with that lot over there. Can you check on it? So they really do care. A lot of people I see all the time, they come in every week. Some people come in every day. You know, I, I, I met a guy coming as I was coming out. He was coming in, and he was looking for Mr. White, and I, I said, well, he just stepped out, and uh, he said, well, I just want to let him know that I was going out to visit my grandmother. He had his pack, packed his lunch. You know, it's like going to, you know, and, and so you go, come out here and, and enjoy that lost one, the, the, the loved one that's lost out, out there. Well, they might not be lost. They're better, better shape than we are, I think, sometimes. But uh, but you can come out there and enjoy that. And it's like, like I said, going to a, a, a park somewhere. It is. It's, it's a, about 100 acres here. So we have people that come in and just, they jog through. They walk their pets through. They just sit on a bench and read. Um, but... We have people that are really concerned and they want to keep help us keep the place nice. So if there's a concern about anything in the cemetery, they'll come in and they'll let us know about it. And it means a lot to us because they, this shows that they do care about. Usually we, we talk about, you know, pre-planning and all that. We're going to talk a little bit about that as we go through the show today. But th today I, I kind of, you know, when we got with Claudia and said, you know, let's really show the cemetery because of what it is. You know, if you're out there and you're you're looking for a place to, to, to bury a loved one, I mean, this is definitely a place to check out. And pre-planning-wise, it's like I said, Claudia, if I had to do it over again with my wife, uh, I, her and I would have shopped, uh, you know, a long time ago and figured out where we wanted to be versus is wait until that ha something happens now you have no choice you're it's a reaction it, it's just a reaction thing you, you're lost you're, you know because you're you've lost a loved one now you got to make decisions that's hard to make decisions then and the it right is. ones just before this show actually started today I had a gentleman come in he had been in two weeks ago he just moved um, a grandparent uh, from her apartment somewhere else so they had a discussion and they decided that he would go ahead and make the plans for everything so that's what he did everything's done so he's happier now the family's happier now because they don't ha they know they won't have the, a burden of anything nobody's gonna be all stressed out everything's finished the pressure's off i mean we go uh, because you uh, there's enough that's going to happen when it happens you know the grieving that's taking place the last thing you want to worry about is ha trying to handle some of the the things that and, and uh, we talked about it in all the, the shows that we've been doing is just taking care of those you know the little things that you don't realize are going to hit you mm -hmm. yeah and there you know there are at least 50 different things actually have it all written down 50 different things that you have to get done when you have to bury a loved one so it's not just about the funeral arrangements it's not just about the burial it's all about other things that you have to do after someone is deceased yeah, and when you're talking about that, of course, there again, we've talked about it over and over again, where you have to, you know, the, the body has to go to a funeral home, and so you have to go through a funeral home, but they, they don't have to make all your decisions for you. I mean, you don't have to necessarily buy a, the, the, that merchandise from that particular funeral home or whatever. You can, if you pre, especially if you're prearranged, Claudia, I, you know, that's what I, you know, try to tell people, especially if you're, you're out there and you're a, a couple, married couple, Make that decision together now versus waiting, and and then you can start making because you got payment plans. Right, give yourself, you know, do yourself a favor by giving yourself that time to shop around because there are plenty of places in the state of Delaware where you can go and, and check things out when it comes to, you know, cemeteries, funeral homes, burial lots, different costs of things. So give yourself, you know, that time. Do yourself that favor. 
just visitation, just visit visitations. You know, we different have people come in and out here do that all the time. They just want to say circulate through and see what we have, get our information, and then they go. And to me, that makes me happy because they've had it on their mind. Yeah. You know, so to me, if you're thinking about it, you know, then that's good. That's good enough for me. And, and that's what I tell you. And when you come out here, what I like about this, you talk about it in every show. And we're going to actually take you out and show you some of it here in just a second. But we talk about what a nice place this is and historic-wise. I mean, you know, the, you started here at the entrance. When it comes in, you, you say there's 100 acres out here. Folks, it hadn't even begun. You're not halfway filled up. No, not, not no. There we, we have about half of that that's not even developed yet. But, but this is a great place because we're non-sectarian. We bury all faiths here. We have a, the traditional part of the cemetery in the front we have a memorial park we have a Muslim section Greek section a section for children um, we have private cribs we have community cribs we have a lot of different things going on here so it gives people a lot of choice yeah and that's, that's what I try to tell people we're gonna go through and show you some of that but we want to talk about because we're talking about you know a lot of people you know they don't realize what it takes to maintain a cemetery and this time of year and in winter time uh, it, everything affects you guys and what you're able to do at different seasons I mean and to get out here because funerals don't wait, you know. Yeah. They, they, and so these guys got to get out here in this excess of heat and do their job still. And at the same time, try to maintain the cemetery in the condition that it is uh, year round. It takes at least a week, at least that for the guys to cut and weed the entire cemetery, at least that. And depending on what might be going on, because in heat like this, it, you know, it's a lot on the guys to be out all day in heat like this. And it's hard on the machinery too. So when I say at least a week, unless something pops up, we have to get something you know, repaired or something like that, it can take longer. So you're talking weeding around each individual, individual stone and there are thousands out here and flat markers, they have to do that. And then they have to mow around it and they have to pick up things from trees, pets, all kinds of different things going on. So it's actually more than a week of maintenance to get through the entire cemetery. And that's not counting all of a sudden, oh, well, you got three funerals today. That's not counting that. And you have to get this done because we do service the community with funerals. And you have to satisfy the customers and make it look nice. So. Yeah. yeah, and so when you drive through the gates here, you, you, I'm always amazed because I love the front part of it here is when you first come in because it is the older section. It's the mature section, we should say, all grown in at different times of years. It's it, The foliage here is just, it, it just oh, it, you, you got to love walking, driving up in the mornings at different seasons and everything. I loved it last fall. And when spring we, uh, and fall. Yeah, fall was just spectacular, all the different colors and everything. We're going to show you some of the different areas right now in the cemetery. So, you know, as we make our way down through here, you know, Take a look at this. I tell you, you, you got to take your hats off to a guy by the name of Henry White, way back in the 1800s, who started all this. He must have came through here and said, "This is where I want to spend eternity, and I want a lot of people to join me because they've got a, you know." And I, I'm I'm from Texas, of course, and we've got family graveyards. I think that's probably what this pretty much started out as, is a family, and just kind of grew into it. It, it, it did. It, it's this family operated business has been since 1895 when the gates first opened, and the family's right here in the front. So it's a great place. It's like five generations of the same family, which makes me very happy because it shows a lot of security and care about what they were doing for all these years. So. Yeah, and, and when you're talking about that, that just shows me because uh, where I had a chance, I was talking to Paul here earlier, and uh, he was showing me where his dad's going to be buried and where he's going to be buried. So this is an ongoing. It's not like these guys are going to disappear tomorrow. No, you know, no. and that's why, I, I, that's why I enjoy working here so much, and I do feel secure working here because I know this is has been a family business for all these years and and it'll continue to and and it just shows you the care of it and how the knowledge that they know about this cemetery the cemetery business is is great it's wonderful I learn something new every day yeah and when we I learn something new every time I come out here with you because we're looking here at the historic things of uh, the the white family mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I was talking to Paul and his great-grandfather actually was born uh, the year that Abraham Lincoln so the one of the whites names was Abraham Lincoln white I mean they named him right after Abraham Lincoln I thought you know just another history because we talk about the astronaut so you come out here and just looking at the headstones as you're walking through and then just kind of reflecting history yeah, yeah that definitely and it does show history as is such a good word because it shows the transition of how things changed in this business because you know a lot of these stones and what they're made of we don't use it anymore today and you can see the differences on what lots have vaults which which ones don't you know and how they've gone from one material to now granite you know and even the cut 
in the stone is different. So you can see the whole transition when history changed, how this cemetery changed with it. So. We're standing, like you said, in the older part of it, and you just look down through here and you, you see this. It's more the upright uh, tomb, tombstones and, and, and... You know, and back in the day, many, many years ago, you see the more statuesque uh, monuments. That's what monolith. I want. I want something yeah, big. These monolith, large, large stones, you know, for families. Usually there are uh, many lots multiple lots of round stones of that size. But you can see the difference, you know, and as you start from the front of the cemetery and we move our way back, you'll see how that changed. You'll see how the styles of the, the stones have changed. And you don't see these huge monoliths uh, uh, type stones that we have here. As beautiful as they are, they're not as popular now, but they do mean something to us. Oh, you know, yeah, it yeah. does show the history and the beauty of this cemetery. Yeah, I, I'm looking up there on top. It looks like a, a urn or, or something on top of that. Uh, you know, absolutely gorgeous stone. You know, I, I want a statue of me or something. You know, <laughs> you know but but you, can people still uh, come in here and get the upright like like this? Or this because uh, I know that in yes, certain cemeteries yes. it's more yes. of a park. Yes, you can get. You can still get. Um, a monument in this size. It may not be made with the same material, but you can still get something of that size. I've had some customers come in and inquire about, um, you know, monuments that are that size. But of course then, you know, I have to remind them when you buy something that large, you have to make sure that you also purchase enough lots for it to go on top of. Yeah, because yeah, you want this whole thing surrounded and everything else, not just one well, individual. Yes and, yes, and then you're getting into maybe another fee because when you go to inter someone on that lot, we're going to have to move that huge stone. So that's going to be another cost to the customer for us to get a crane in here to move a stone of that size. So there's always you consider you know, when you oh, get something oh, that big. Oh yeah, and when you're talking about considering, and, and, and now's the time to consider. Don't wait until it happens to you, where you run out here and you got it at the last minute and try to make these arrangements. Because I'm telling you, it can be a mess over you. You say over 50 things that you got to do, and, and and it's just unbelievable. Well, absolutely, because you're closing out what's left of what a, what a person has left. You know, you're you're going to close that out. Some people spend years closing out the life of someone who's gone now you know you may uh, have financial things going on uh, property things going on so there's always other things lingering along that you got to close out always yeah so the, 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 the best way to close it out is close it out before it's that time and you can do that pre-planning wise and everything else but I want to show you more of the, the Silver Brook I think it's just probably one of the best cemeteries in this city if it's not the best cemetery in the city and when I say that it, it, it's important to understand because it being family owned you know it's a lot of care I mean I know Paul White I know Paul White Jr. or I guess it's the third now I'm not sure what generation it is but uh, I know him personally and this means a lot to them out here it truly does and they're not going anywhere it's not going to be somebody else running this next year it's going to be a white the the great greats greats before my boss paul white the third they passed on you know their ideas and and their way of doing things their customer service they passed it right on down the chain right on to me because now i'm part of it so it does mean a lot because it hasn't changed hands you know so the same mindset in this business is still here yeah, I can't. I can't believe when you did the record keeping too, because I, I watched you do it one day when somebody came in looking for somebody was buried in the 1800s, and within a matter of minutes, you had to do some digging, but you were able to find that gravesite for them. Find the very first one. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's unbelievable. So it's all because it, there again, that's that personal touch from a family keeping track of the records and everything else. Because that's not on computer. A lot of this, you know, that's that you got to go back and dig through files. But since it's a family that's done this, the files are kept up to date and everything else is pretty pretty simple. But it's absolutely gorgeous this old section. But take a look at this. And, and as we make our way down through the park, you can kind of see the change. Oh, I say park the cemetery because it is a park. I mean, but as you make your way down through here, you kind of see the change from the old to the new. We're more in a modern section here, but you could say this is more of a Greek section here? Yes, it is a Greek section. This is a very large portion of, this is section three, and uh, it's Greek. And, you know, as we were riding down from the, the front of the cemetery down to here, you could gradually see the transition and the change in the stones. You see definitely more color. There's a variety of colors here, a variety of uh, shapes and sizes. However, you don't really see the tall monolith uh, stones that we saw up front. 
which was something that was popular back in the day, back in the 1800s and so forth. But you do see some very beautiful stones here, uh, color, um, you see a lot of etchings in the stone, a lot of carvings in the stone. You know, it's absolutely gorgeous here, but this is our Greek section. Yeah, and when you're talking about that, I just love that stone we started out on it uh, when we started it down here in the Greek section, was that, uh, you know, you talk about etchings in the stone and everything. You can really make a statement for that family member with a stone, you know, where a lot of cemeteries, like where my wife ended up, you know, where she chose to be laid when it was all said and done, I can't put up a upright. And I would love to be able to put something up saying, you know, uh, uh, like that and saying, but so that's why I tell people it's important that you can make those decisions because I believe my wife would have joined me in the fact of, hey, if we can't do what we want to do there, then let's pick another cemetery, you know, so that's why it's important to shop. It is. And, you know, when you look at stones, and I'm out here all the time, and, and what I see is that, you know, the family stones or the individual flush markers, they tell a story about the family or the individual. You know, particularly like the Greek stones, they have, some of them have etchings with faces. Um, you might see all types of things, but they say something about who it, who's interred. You can do anything with this stone. You can put faces on there, hobbies, all types of emblems and different things. So, you know, these stones say something about the, the people that are buried here. And that's why it's important to check around, folks, because in a lot of cemeteries, you're restricted as to what you can put on a stone. I didn't, I didn't realize that. And we're in that situation. I, I'm only allowed to put certain things on, with on the stone. Here, it seems like you guys are pretty much about the family and what the family wants. We definitely are, but we definitely have to have rules and regulations just like the next cemetery would. So, if a family were to, let's just say, use another vendor um, outside of Silverbrook Cemetery, they fill out an application. Along with that application, um, you know, it, it comes to us and we have to approve what comes in. We have to approve the size, the type of material that's used, you know, even right down to color. All those things have to be approved. So, you know, we have our rules and regulations too, just, just like the next. However, as you can see when you look around, um, we do allow quite a bit. Well, you got a lot more. You're, you're, you're a lot more versatile. I mean, this Absolutely. is one. This is yeah. one area, like you said, this yeah. is a Greek area here. Yes. But uh, you know, but other areas, you might not be able to do something here that you can do somewhere. Uh, Absolutely, yes. And and the big difference between this part of our cemetery versus that we have a memorial park, everything there is flat. Everything there is bronze. But you can still be creative with something flat and bronze. <laughs> And I see the guys there. I, I feel so bad about them guys working, working, working. I mean, they're out here mowing lawns and everything else, you know. And it doesn't stop. Their their jobs got to go on no it matter what. It does not stop. And they're out there, out here early in the morning, you know. And they have their breaks and they have their lunch, and they're right back out here to the end of the day and on weekends. So it it does take a lot. And it is a very very hot day today, and they're still working. Yeah, it's a, it's all just for you and taking care of your family's plot is what it boils down to. Let's take a look at some more of the cemetery here. We wouldn't do it justice if we didn't stop and talk about this building right here because this is a historic building as far as I'm concerned. A lot of things have happened. First crematory in the state of Delaware right here. Oh, absolutely. This is, you know, we do a lot of business here. We do a lot of cremations every week uh, with most of the funeral homes in the area. So definitely a historic place. Yeah, and when you're talking about that, you're going back in time to, you know, the astronauts. When they when they lost the astronauts that time, the, the Dover didn't have a crematory. The, this is where they brought them. And I want to say that this is available for folks. I mean, you have to go through your funeral directors once again. You can't come for this through you guys, right? No, you have to uh, go through a licensed funeral home director to orchestrate your cremation. And, uh, you know, they would uh, actually bring the remains to us. We take, along with the appropriate permits, we take care of the cremation and then we turn the cremains back over to the funeral home director who would pass them over to family or however that was going to work. But you can shop, I guess, for the urns and things like that. You yeah. guys have some great, great pieces in there. Yeah, we do. Shape, different shapes, colors. So there's also a variety in those as well. Yeah, so if you're looking to do that and go that route, I would just want to mention that as we're going through the cemetery here. I just think that's a, 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 a just a historic, you know, another white family historic thing right It there. is, and it's a very, very busy place. The, cre the crematory is a very, very busy place. And right next to the crematory, we have a cremation plot. There's nothing but cremated remains in this lot uh, to our right, right here. So, so you can go to crem cremation and still, at the same time, do a burial service in it. Uh, bur bury the ashes right there and give that little marker. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's correct. We, we still bury a lot. Uh, families do uh, sometimes want um, their cremains to be buried in the actual cremation uh, plot that we have or lot that we have. But you still have 
um, also the um, advantage of if you have a lot here, you uh, can put your cremated remains on top, you know, of a lot that you may already have in existence on the cemetery. So, yeah, so plan, people. It's all about plan, and we're going to talk some more about that, but we want to show you one more area before we get out of here today. Our next area we want to go into, and there's a couple more areas too we'll mention while we're here because we're not going to be able to show each and every area, but this is more of your uh, a park-like setting, I guess, you know, and I, I really like this because you guys didn't just come out here and just start putting monuments in the ground. You built things to give it that more of that park-like area. Yeah, there are benches. There are, I think, a few more trees here. Um, we did lose a couple to the storm last year, but we still have plenty of trees here where there's a lot of shade and we have benches, you know, in this area. This is our Memorial Park. Um, and in this section, you'll see that everything's flat. You're not gonna see any standing monuments at all. They're all flat and they're all bronze here. Yeah, yeah, when you say you're not gonna see any monuments, you are gonna see these type of monuments throughout, you know, because I, yeah. I, which is. Well, these are features. There's, there's, a, there's a feature here and there's a feature over in our long, long crypt section that's, that's a Bible and we have praying hands and different things like this. But this, this just, you know, is another part that uh, is, is part of comfort here, first of all. It's very quiet here and people like to come, as I said earlier, and sit. Um, but there have been passages from the Bible and different things that you might see on a feature, you know, in the cemetery. And this is just one of them. I just love this, you know, the shepherd in the garden there. And then that's where you're at. You're in a garden here. But back across, I, I noticed over here, too, because we don't want to forget about that. Because you guys have crypt areas as well. You know, you've got it all. Yeah, we definitely do. We have um, community crypts um, where people can buy out of the, you know, we out of the... Uh, the one particular building, we have a certain amount of crypts and, you know, families can buy individually or tandemly from, you know, head to foot uh, crypt. And we have niches as well that are along the side wall of um, every building. And then we have um, private crypts too along the cemetery, within the cemetery, private crypts where family have bought their own. Yeah, so it doesn't matter what you're looking for. If you're looking for something special, Silverbrook has it all, all for you for choosings. And and, and, that, and when I say choosing, choose now. Don't wait until the event takes place. I mean, a lot of folks out there, you got elderly family members. You know that day's getting closer. You don't want to think about it, uh, but it is going to be there. And I, you've talked about it so many times. You see it more uh, than anybody else because you have to deal with these family members when they come in there. And you say, before we can do anything, they've got to be right a check, you know, because, you know, you can't go back and re re grab so you, you guys have to be paid before anything takes place and that you know and that that's what pre plan is all about oh absolutely because if you don't pre plan then you know prior to an interment of anyone we have to be paid 100% and we require it at least 48 hours before the interment date so yeah that yeah. can be stressful sometimes. Yeah, and then uh, on top of that, now I got to remember because you have to go through a funeral home in the state of Delaware. You have to go through a funeral home, but there again, that funeral home doesn't have to make all those decisions, Claudia. I mean, uh, you you've helped me. I mean, when it comes to selecting my stone for it, now we had to get special approval because I didn't have it in this cemetery, and that's kind of how I found you guys was uh, was selecting a stone. I mean, and 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 you guys, you you really helped me out because I wanted a particular color, and nobody else. But you were able to find what I was looking for. You know, we had. To get it in some Montana I forget where you yeah you know, but but you got what I was looking for the selection of the uh, stone and and particularly color is great you know there, there's I like families to come in and sit down and we can talk about all the colors and the shapes and the sizes because the variety is 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 great what you can do with a stone whether it's flat or whether it's something upright yeah, and, and there's so many selections now. We're in an area here. This is more of a of a bronze, uh, you know, area. I guess in in your garden, does it have to be bronze in the garden area? It has to be bronze in the memorial park. You're you're going to see everything bronze, but you can do something to spice it up a little bit if you like. You can mount it on granite, the granite color of your choice. So you're going to see flat markers in bronze, and you might see some as we do here that have a granite foundation on it. Yeah, which I think is, yeah, well, I think that's great because a lot of great uh, cemeteries don't offer that. You've got to just go with the, you know, a plain, you know, in the ground thing. And I, I like the choices that you have here at Silverbrook. Silverbrook's very accessible. Like, it's, it's right there in the heart of Wilmington, if you would, on, off Lancaster Avenue. It's one of the oldest cemeteries, been around since the 1800s. We talk about the White family and how they've been in, involved with the, the business. And 
they're, they're you know, and it, it keeps going down generation through generation. I mean, Paul is out here this morning. I know his dad doesn't doesn't miss too many days not stopping by, you know, because just to be sure that everything's being done the way it's supposed to be done. Because it's important to them. I mean, their family's here, and they when you're coming into this, you're an extension of their family. Oh, absolutely, definitely, and it, you know, like I said, it shows the caring of the cemetery does show it has over the years. So it's it's a wonderful place to be. Yeah, and of course, always get a hold of Miss Claudia. She'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. But pre-planning, folks, that's the key about it. We've talked about it in another show. We'll talk about it more. But today, we just want to want to show you the cemetery, the colors that's out here. We got to come back in the fall because I love the fall time when the leaves start changing and all that. You'll like it too. But thank you so much. Thank you.